Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You can go to live in France, but you cannot become a Frenchman. You can go to live in Germany or Turkey or Japan, but you cannot become a German or Turk or Japanese. But anyone from any corner of the earth can come to live in America and become an American. Welcome back to A Nation of Immigrants, a bi-weekly interview program featuring the lives of immigrants, knowledge, diversity, and inclusion. Created by Think Tank Hawaii, Kingsfield Law Office, and U.S.-China Cultural Media Group. Our guests share their life stories, journey to the United States, and their contributions to cultural diversity. Today's guest is Vivian Wu, founder and CEO of Mighty Voice, Dasheng Media. Welcome, Vivian. Hi. Hi, Chang. Nice uh, to see you on the screen, and thank you for having me here. Our pleasure and honor. Thank you, Vivian. You are my favorite investigate journalist, but now you are a founder and a CEO of a company in New York. You are a seasoned media industry professional with 20 years of experience in journalism, international reporting, and media innovation in both English and the Chinese markets. Currently, you are the founder and the CEO of Mighty Voice, aka Dashan Media, a New York-based cultural and creative content production corporation. At Mighty Voice, you lead a global team of media professionals and tech experts spearheading the development of groundbreaking model of community journalism. It's, that's a very impressive resume, Vivian. Even I know you very well, but uh, you have constantly surprised me with your innovation and your adventure. And first, could you share with, with, with our audience that the pivotal moments that led you to relocate to the United States and establish a company in New York City. Okay, uh, thank you for the nice work, Chang. You know me well, so you know. Um, so, put in my background very briefly. Um, I really spent like twenty years uh, in the media field, but I spent years in newspaper. I started my career uh, from two thousand three, when China was actually seeing uh, very. Um, uh, prosperous, very inspirational period of uh, uh, journalism production, uh, market change, and, um, you know, uh, progressive era. So I was lucky that I, I did a lot of story. I accumulated a lot of uh, skills, but I changed my job several times. I moved from Beijing to Hong Kong, from Hong Kong to New York, and New York to London. So after years of um, uh, working in the field, I realized Okay, I'm lucky that I um, accumulate extensive experience, um, but I also see the change of media landscape, uh, change of technology, change of people's habits. Um, I see the actually there are many pivotal moments. You see, I see how people's uh, habits of absorbing information was innovated by. The application of social media also it was changed by the TikTok, a short video, and YouTube. And uh, at the same time, you see the, the diminishing of high quality content, especially if you, uh, like me, I work in the br bridge. I work as a bridge. It's like I try to tell China's story to the world, but also I try to um, bring the global perspective to the Chinese audience uh, by switching the languages. So I feel like, okay, there are several moments. I feel, okay, first I um, I really need to do something to change the, the vision, to change the vision about media shared by the mm -hmm. public. Also, I need to... I realized uh, too long in the institutional media, uh, you find on one side, there are a lot of online celebrities, a lot of individual voices. Uh, they might not be very professionally trained, but uh, they have chance to uh, voice out. Uh, but, they, but in the meanwhile, the public suffered um, the, the de deteriorated quality of content, and there was uh, misinformation, disinformation, polarization of public opinions, people refuse to talk to each other. On the other side, you find, okay, there are professionals, but they don't have a chance or platform to, to use that to better help the public to make better decisions. Um, so this is a professional thinking pattern. And of course, uh, in my personal uh, period, uh, in my personal um, uh, dimension, I, the pivot, pivotal moment 
Uh, once was um, I see China uh, change uh, Xi Jinping change his constitution, um, and China basically uh, publicly announced that they don't need to learn from the outside world anymore. They they have their own. Uh, system of value system, professional level system, even definition of democracy and the freedom, etc. So, on the other side, you find uh, okay, uh, Trump became a president, and then uh, there are a lot of uh, drama, a lot of protests in Hong Kong. The world need more rational voices, uh, but also they need a more individual uh, a platform that can address individualized uh, needs. So all this, um, all this um, uh, uh, facts, elements, historical changes, uh, force me to think. Okay, um, I'm at a pivotal juncture. I need a change that could harness my accumulated skills while embracing the freedom um, that can uh, empower me to innovate and address more uh, specific needs both uh, by, from the public, but also by myself. Um, so I don't know if I answer a question, but it's like you did. You uh, did. <laughs> after a long journey uh, in the media field, uh, mm -hmm. see how technology changed people's life. Uh, you see how the public suffered, um, uh, you know, uh, Western uh, quality of journalism. The public needs a better way of doing journalism publication. Etc. And uh, you also see the social political changes, both um, you know on the two sides of the specific ocean, uh, Pacific Ocean. You 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 say, okay, it's 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 time for change. But where to start? Start by uh, relocation. Start by doing a new platform that I can somehow uh, design, control, also uh, you know fast to develop without any mm -hmm. uh, baggage. Uh, I see in the institutional media. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, You're so. very well said. You you answer the question very well, both professionally and personally. It's uh, uh, I, I particularly intrigued by the, uh, your mention of the quality content. Now we are living in this very saturated information uh, time and bombarded by TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, you name it. Uh, but it, the need for quality content couldn't be more urgent. Yeah. And so you primarily gather your insights and updates. Where do you gather all this information? Because when I were I, I work with my uh, students, I always ask them that, where do you get your information? And okay. tell me the primary sources of your information. Is uh, traditional media print, digital, or social media? And so my question to you as a professional Obviously, is this question more relevant to uh, to your work? So, where do you primarily gather insights, and updates about ongoing developments, both in the United States and in China? And and the second follow up question is, how do you ensure the real reliability and the integrity of those resources? Of obviously, you have your judgment about what considered reliable sources, but uh, sometimes even the mainstream media, they, they've, been, they've been, you know, confused by uh, misinformation and disinformation. Uh, very relevant and important question. Actually, when I was um, working as a manager at BBC, mm -hmm. uh, if I was doing recruitment, uh, I, we, we must make a question, uh, where's, uh, what do you read and uh, what, what's mm -hmm. your source? Mm -hmm. uh, so let me share uh, how I start my day and uh, how I form my, you know, uh, reading uh, habit. It's like, I think it's very, very important first to, to sit in the middle and um, you need to make sure that you have diverse source of information. Um, uh, that being said, it's actually hard because as you said, people are confused. And if you, really, if, if you are not professional um, and uh, you don't have um, a checked list of uh, verified information, reliable source, it's, it's very, very easy for you to, to, to trust, to mistrust something and you just retweet it. And or repost it uh, either on WeChat or with uh, Twitter, then actually you are part of this uh, 
relay of misinformation, and then we, we see actually wrong information go viral. So uh, how uh, how to make sure that I read uh, um, good information? I usually I spend I start my day. Uh, first, I have many, many apps installed on my phone, but I have two phones. I have one phone following the China's uh, apps and uh, 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 and the related Chinese or, or, or traditional Chinese, you know, because I also monitor Hong Kong, Taiwan, uh, and the domestic Chinese uh, media outlets. So this uh, very uh, diverse uh, source of information can help me to verify any information if it's to do with China uh, policy, for example. Um, or, uh, but this is just one layer of Chinese reading. And of course, I have, um, I followed many uh, good quality, even though there's still a censorship issue, but they are still somehow verified source of uh, big news or local news. Uh, for example, Caixin, uh, Caixin, um, uh, there are some, uh, or uh, Xinhua Xie, actually. Why, why not mention Xinhua Agency? Because there's a monopoly of uh, official information. Um, of course, that's a, that's a, that's a fact that suffered by the journalism industry. That means, you know, all the uh, authentic information uh, to do with uh, top authority or, uh, governmental uh, behaviors uh, were not monopolized by the state media. So even though you, you don't like the narrative, you still need to follow what Xinhua has said. Um, or a lot of information was released by CCTV or their uh, state-owned uh, outlets. Uh, and you also have a layer of uh, local news. And uh, they have their WeChat uh, accounts. They have, uh, but don't forget, uh, uh, there are actually a, ring, a whole range of public intellectuals or journalists or retired journalists. They have this fact-checking habits. So you always need to uh, cross-exam uh, one single information. And if I see a piece of uh, story on any uh, platform, I try to find uh, three more sources. And I always try to find the original source if that uh, story was quoting somebody's uh, you know, facts from that original source. Um, English side, and then this is the first uh, or one or two hours of my day. I just have a navigation, what's really going on. And then I need to quickly decide, oh, what, what if this is Chinese news, uh, how the world will see this. And of course, in the meanwhile, in the parallel, I actually have apps installed on, on my another phone, American phone. We have uh, CNN, BBC, New York Times, New Yorker, Economist, uh, uh, <laughs> FT, uh, you, you name it. And also you need to follow verified accounts of uh, journalists, the think tank, um, all the government's um, official accounts on Twitter, if they have. Um, and of course, always, always uh, try to find the original source of that fact. So I, what I'm saying here is like, uh, uh, people need to, as individuals, even though you're not professional, you need to have this habit of fact-checking. Um, we, we are suffering from this echo, echo chamber problem. It's especially this echo chamber was enhanced and was actually repeated by the social media. That means if you just follow 50 people in your circle, then you are um, always taking for granted that, okay, if this story is shared by my friend, I, I, without any hesitation or rethinking, I will repost it. But as I said in the beginning, you are then probably part of this disinformation redistribution game. So always, always double check, uh, even though this information is shared by your neighbor, only if that neighbor is your, uh, is an investigative reporter. But even though you still cannot take for granted that's true, you still need to double check. So I, I, what I'm saying is like, if you have this habit of cross-examining, um, always, if you, you, you do read several languages, it's always important to check the source from the original um, countries, uh, local verified uh, media outlets. Yep. And Very then well, if, you yes. could, if you could check with your local friends, and then uh, I think then you you will have a very clear navigation of what's really going on. 
And then, of course, we talk about the topics or other, uh, you know, stories that uh, as a media professional needs to address. Yeah. So this is just a way of thinking and uh, <laughs> having. Yeah, I see. I, I found a lot of. Thank you for sharing the very insightful observation and uh, uh, some of uh, uh, the professional, you know, uh, workflow of you know, uh, gathering information. I found some similarities between our works at. And you always go back to the original source. And for the uh, uh, legal practice, and we always start, we, some, we can start with the secondary sources, but uh, uh, at the end of the day, we must go back to the primary source. And yeah. always, uh, any argument must be substantiated and any evidence must be corroborated. And I also intrigued by you mentioning of the parallel universe and uh, uh, echo chamber, uh, uh, a, also known as echo chamber, but it feels like inevitable and uh, we are living in parallel universes. I'm not only talking about people in different countries, geography, living in different parallel universes, but also even my, you and my, uh, my neighbor and I can live in parallel universe. And it, it's the same family member in the same household. If one is follower of Fox News, the other is MSNBC. Obviously, two of them live in completely different universe. And uh, so my question, you are leading uh, Dashing Media and Mighty Voice, and uh, it, uh, it uh, stands out pretty quickly. I, 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 I uh, congratulate you for a marvelous, your remarkable achievement in a short period of time. And this is a huge media landscape, and you are navigating in, even you have a... a a very strong team, and you have years of experience, and you are in New York. You are you are a hundred percent New Yorker right now, so you, there must be challenges to you. There must be obstacles, and uh, how to stand out? How to, you know, the subtitle of our show today is "Mighty Voice Be Heard," and uh, you want to be heard, and we hear you. But uh, how can you ensure that um, uh, your company uh, can distinguish from other? media outlets and continue to engage and the, the audience. And basically the question at the end of the day is how can you make your voice well heard and distinguished from other voices? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, I think our biggest challenge is actually um, people's attention. You know, uh, it's a competition for uh, attention. Uh, people are busy with their social media, uh, chatting, messaging uh, applications. Um, as um, it's very hard to uh, drag people out of their comfort zone and you know grab that attention. So how to do this? I think first, uh, even though uh, the market is busy, but you see a lot of professionals. Are giving up their jobs. I mean, I'm saying this, um, we see in America or free society, there's a, a continuous laid off professionals, media industry is uh, mm -hmm. um, fading off um, because of the high tech, because people's change of, uh, you know, change of people's habits of uh, grabbing information. People would rather uh, use social media uh, than uh, reading the high quality professionals. Journalism. So what I'm uh, but uh, also this is uh, even more important and more prominent uh, in Chinese sphere. So uh, I've done both in English Chinese. Uh, I decided we have three strategy. First is we give a very refreshing, very strong, prominent uh, branding of our value. So our mission is we create a space for uh, freedom, decency, and the beauty. beauty. It sounds um, interesting, but also different because we, we don't talk about freedom of speech. We don't talk about democracy. It's not the cliche you will find from the international media or uh, no local Chinese media will talk about the freedom so openly like us. So we are free. That means we don't have uh, self-censorship. We don't have censorship. Uh, we, are, uh, we, are, uh, we, we, we uphold the freedom that we really take it seriously. It means nobody can... Um, uh, you know, uh, they were, nobody can uh, shake up our independence. And we highlight, we are very, very uh, strict with our quality. Uh, that means we are very carefully, we're very carefully choosing the topic of our uh, stories. Uh, we are very, uh, 
uh, stripped with quality. You, you see the professional uh, image, design, narrative, uh, fact checking. Uh, we are also have very comprehensive and aggressive social media strategy, even though we have very, very small team, but we have this young kids, young people who are very dry, who are very driven to do something different. They are bored by the, the status quo. So uh, we are very uh, aggressive, also very diligent on social media. And then people immediately get, oh, this is a very refreshing image. And uh, look at their stories. Wow, the stories are very relevant. We address most important issues, not only uh, uh, in the free world, but also in China. And we also highlight our global vision. This is so important because uh, imagine China is now uh, getting more and more closed. They are more isolated from the outside world, but actually demand for uh, you know, global vision of a narrative, a wider range of topic selection. And also like continue, it's like a, a selected, sophisticated uh, intellectual, issue, yeah. intellectual yeah. Uh, style. Yeah. But we don't sound arrogant. We're very relatable. We are very approachable. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, even our design, uh, our branding is, is designed by a young girl. She's uh, universally beautiful. She has a very uh, good artistic sense. So we try our best to stand up, to give you a sense of this is a decent, free, high-quality professional uh, platform that you can be yourself because we are not arrogant. We, we make sure that all the topics we choose are relatable. We try to echo people's, uh, you know, uh, the soft points, uh, your pink, uh, you know, your, your, your pink, you know, your, your pain point, you pain point, yep. yeah, pain point. Then, um, people need such a uh, new platform. People need such a new voice. People are very bored by, um, unrelatable, uh, somehow arrogant, too remote address of China issues. If you read international, uh, headlines, even though they're good stories, but, um, it's just not that approachable or, uh, people are bored by the trash on social media. We have to say this, it's mm. like a talk change people's habits. People are very impatient, but high, good, high and good quality content actually prove is proven to, to, to be needed. Then I'm trying to address that need. Um, so uh, now I can be very proud to say that Sheng Yi really um, has very good reputation among our professional peers. Oh yeah. Uh, and I also want to say it's like uh, I I'm pretty sure every tweet, every story, every video um, we produce, uh, you won't as a reader, as an audience, you won't be regretful if you share that. You you will be proud to say, hey, uh, let me recommend this story, read it. You won't feel like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to, uh, I, I don't, I want every reader and every distributor of our story being same pride as we are. So if you feel proud of something, of course, you will be very um, enthusiastic uh, sharing it. Mm -hmm. It's what I see every day. It's like I'm approached by my friends, my audience, my readers. They say, great, da sheng, jia yu, add all you do it well. So I don't know if I answer your question, but you did. You did splendid, splendid. <laughs> it's a uh, uh, you, 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 your voice, uh, Darshan's voice is very refreshing, and uh, in the current media landscape is is a, such a pleasant surprise and it's so, so reassuring to see that you are doing this. You are bringing a fresh air to the to the media landscape. I really appreciate that. And we are almost running out of time, but I do have, we have so many questions I want to ask you. We have to invite you back to the show, but uh, let's uh, 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 switch to a, a lighter side. And I have a three quick, quick questions for you. The, the first one is, uh, who is your favorite journalist and uh, worldwide, do down the limit to the America or in China? Second question is about time travel. If time, you're a young lady, but if time travel per, permitted, you could travel back to your early 20s, fresh out of college. What wisdom you could share with a younger self? And the last but not the least, is there a particular a book or, or, or a TV program or, or movie you recommend to our audience? 
Three quick questions, please. Oh, great. All great questions. Uh, let me try to answer. Actually, for the first question, who are my favorite journalists? There are too many. Because uh, remember, I spent 20 years. Uh, so basically, I need like a constant reboost. I need a constant uh, push in mm -hmm. my back. Then I, I feel uh, motivated. But um, I can name several, like, uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, Ariana. Farachi, Farachi, you know, Arena Farachi, she, she's a role model, but the more, uh, the, the older I get, uh, especially, uh, the more I, I'm driven to be a, a female leader, I realize, uh, she's a very, uh, she's a badass, she, she's not afraid of being, uh, tough, uh, but also her pieces, she's never afraid of challenging, um, the, the strongest and the toughest, but she always tried to get the questions out. So uh, I'm always inspired by her, uh, both for the technique and the, uh, you know, personal uh, style of working. But I'm not that tough as she she was. I, I'm not that tough. Uh, I'm trying to. Uh, so also like a journalist from New York Times, such as Chris Buckley. Um, oh, yeah. he, he's so good because he's good. so diligent. He's studying Chinese. He always sends some sentences out so well in English, you'll see bingo, this guy knows China better than me. So you then, you know, also she, uh, he, um, if he was writing for some obituaries, for example, he spent years uh, studying one uh, persona. Um, mm. This is very special, uh, very original, inspirational. And for the book, of course, uh, the first book it came into my mind, George Alvius, uh, 1984. Oh, yes. It get, never gets old, they did. Never gets old. <laughs> and I somehow realized, is this a non-fiction? Is this a fiction? Uh, is this a fiction fiction or, or non-fiction? It's non-fiction. It's non-fiction. It's non-fiction. And for, uh, for the movie... Time travel. Time travel. Oh, time travel. If I was talking to me back to 20 years uh, or younger, I would say stick to your... Uh, stick to the principles, stick to the values. Uh, you are you are right. You are not wrong. Uh, it's hard to be different, but if you carry on, you will see uh, by the at the, at the other side of your journey, you will see you probably are one of the very few. But you you're right. So don't be afraid of uh, doing your, being yourself. Yeah. This very, yeah. What wonderful answers to to the short questions. And thank you so much for your time, Vivian. Uh, again, as I said, I have been constantly amazed by your achievement and by the fresh air you bring to the media landscape. And uh, I, I uh, will continue to, to watch your accomplishment and congratulate to you for, uh, you know, web, new website and new media outlets. You have achieved so much. Uh, as we said in, you're a New Yorker, I'm still a Minnesota, but as we said in Minnesota, be well, do good work, and keep in touch. Thank okay. you, Vivian. Thank you, my pleasure. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the nice work. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha.